Well, I know that I missed a couple of devotions during the week, but I had a bunch of projects that uh, just took all of my time. So I'm sorry if you uh, missed uh, a couple of weeks, a couple of nights rather. But uh, and nevertheless, I'm doing uh, my some of my favorite verses, uh, starting back in the book of Revelation and, and going forward towards Genesis and uh, taking some key verses that I think are special verses. I mean, the whole Bible is special, inspired, and breathed by God, so uh, I don't want to seem like there's some that's better than others, uh, but some of my favorites. And uh, so I want to share those with you, and I hope that you are going to get a long Labor Day weekend. Uh, I'm not sure what my schedule will be like in making the devotions uh, during the weekend. We have some company coming that have been friends for... Uh, some 50 years and um, they were married in the same year we were and celebrate the same 56 years that we celebrate and have been on a number of trips with us to celebrate our anniversary so they're very special friends we're looking forward to seeing them they're gonna go to the Billy Graham library and then uh, come and see us so today we're still in 1st John but we're gonna wrap up 1st John today with uh, verses 4 and 5 uh, in Florida, when I was uh, pastoring down there, there was a group of people, uh, an organization called Overcomers, and it was a very official kind of uh, organization. They had training so that people could counsel those that were addicted to drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever, and uh, gambling. Uh, and uh, help them to see the spiritual way to overcome uh, those addictions and those problems that they were having as a result of those addictions. But really, the Bible says that we're all overcomers, <laughs> every one of us. And uh, it's a good title. Uh, I think that uh, there's some shirts out that I've seen that, are, that, that talk about being overcomers. But here in 1 John 5, 4 and 5, it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Now, does that sound like part of a song? It does to me, too. And uh, that's the good thing about a lot of our hymns and our choruses is they come right out of Scripture. Uh, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. And, and uh, that's exactly what this this sentence says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is the one to overcome the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, it's just such an important thing that we recognize that we need to be sure about our salvation. We need to be sure that we've accepted Christ as our Savior, that we believe that he died for our sins, rose again to prove he had the power over death, and that he was God in the flesh, and uh, that through him we overcome the world. So we're overcomers too, and we don't have to be addicted to anything. Uh, just uh, living a separated life from this world and believing in Jesus as our Savior trusting that he died and that his propitiation, his payment for our sin was adequate. Uh, we are overcomers. And, and I love that phrase, you know. Uh, I, I usually root for underdogs when I don't really have a favorite in any kind of sport. And uh, because I like to see somebody overcome something and I like to see somebody have a victory. Um, but just think about it. We as children of God have overcome the world through Jesus Christ, not on our own merits, not on our own effort, but through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. Overcomers. You're an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. If you know Jesus is your Savior, and we have the victory, and faith is the victory that overcomes the world. That's my thought for the day. God bless you, and have a great day, and I hope you have a wonderful Labor Day weekend. If I don't uh, make any devotions, uh, then we'll see you Monday or Tuesday, but uh, I think I'll probably get a couple in this weekend. Thanks, God.